Welcome back to Grancha's tour which has been held in Croatia, another stage of the super tournament. Some of the past chess players came to play and today we're gonna analyze three games that Mr. Gukash Damaraju played yesterday. So, and let's start with the first game against Vidit and that's the final game of the day with 10 fault repetition. Knight of 3, knight c6, g3, knight of 6, d3, play some weird stuff. Bishop c5, bishop g2, d6, castle, castle, h3, a5, c4, h6, knight c3, knight h7. <laughs> Trying to reroute the knight to g5, trade some pieces of the board, king h2, f5. And also f5 was one of the ideas and the main idea of knight h7 move. I remember once playing a game and, you know, my knight basically was on h7 almost the whole game and then my coach said all right that's the favorite square of romka and then whenever anybody else put their knight on h7 he was like oh you started playing like romka and i was like okay takes bishop f5 bishop e3 queen d7 trying to basically pressure h3 pawn takes takes knight h4 queen d3 and now this pawn was actually poisoned and you will see why because after queen d3 bishop d5 king h8 queen no one it turns out that this queen is completely trapped it has nowhere to go rook d1 is being threatened and then rook d2 wins the queen g5 was played rook d1 of course queen of one queen of one takes so basically we did manage to take rook and knight for the queen but according to computer and you see the evil bar there it's completely lost for black pieces but you will see what happened next takes takes e4 takes takes plus five right queen h5 rook f6 g4 bishop g6 queen c5 knight g5 and you see the pieces are slowly started to you know come to the king come around the skin on h2 is not that safe h4 does rook e8 queen f3 bishop h7 knight to 2 knight to 5 queen c5 rook f3 king g2 knight g4 and now rook d7 was a mistake and you know i saw that memes that here gukesh sacrificed the game basically here yeah rook j was the best move queen d4 knight of six king h2 and here you know we did had to find the crucial c5 so very interesting move because let's say queen c5 takes so what's wrong with that now you see this knight is out of the spin and what black can do they can push this knight to g4 king has to go back and now knight f2 and it turns out that king h2 loses due to rook h3 check and basically this is the only move and black are just up a rook but after c5 of course queen f5 to keep the spin under control rook f2 king h1 and now crucial e3 and bishop e4 so the only move would have been rook h7 king h7 again some knight g4 stuff is being threatened or rook f1 knight g4 with a fork queen e3 and actually here after rook h2 you know white should have had resigned if that happened but i mean just he just didn't find it and he played e3 right away he's still trying to play c5 maybe next move and then rook f2 but here after rook e7 you know bishop e4 in some lines doesn't work that's why after rook f2 this is basically a draw and they repeated this position 10 times from move 37 rook f2 check we went to move 51 where players finally agreed to draw and now we did have 17 seconds he tried to find the win but he couldn't and then you know all right very shaky game by gukesh but then you know a game against snapper a game against one of the most stable chess players in the world right now yeah he had some bad performances in the world championship matches but overall you know you saw how he performed in all the candidates and how he generally performs in the tournament so very very strong guy 
a6, c4, counterattack in line, knight b4, knight c3, d6, takes, takes, d4. So already here, again, very shaky start, I would say, as Jan here has huge development advantage. Knight g5 is playing, knight f7 is being threatened, takes, takes. And after queen of six, actually, Gash is a lot worse. Bishop g3, d3, knight c2, fork was being threatened, rook e5, knight c6, rook d5. And after queen b2, he took the pawn. So Jan should have played this, and you know, potentially, if let's say this, this, some bishop h4, you know, winning an exchange. That of course didn't happen. Rook d5 takes the pawn. And even though it looks like, alright, Gash took a pawn. But, you know, huge problems with development. Bishop on f8, rook on h8, you know, this rook is coming here. You know, this knight is active, this bishop on this diagonal is a monster. But after f6, this, queen d4, and d5, we restricted this bishop on this diagonal, and it's no longer working. I mean, white can try potentially, you know, go king h1, f3, bishop f2, but again, it's very slow right now. You know, they can press this b7, but knight on d8 looks very good. Queen b3, bishop e7, this, queen e4, queen c6, knight d6, and now Kukash had no more problems as all he, his pieces are developed. Rook is co coming to d8, it's getting traded, and basically he is going into the some sort of endgame. Or, I mean, here is not middle game, it's very close to endgame where he's up upon. Knight b4 takes, takes, rook d8, does, you know, everything's protected, does, queen d3, queen d2, knight f4, threatening checkmate, knight d2, knight g4, queen a3, you know, trying to reroute, back, 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 and now king has come to a safe place on f7. Even though computer thinks it's a mistake, I mean, it's all logical, all logical moves, this pawn is protected, he can't really get to it. Queen eight, h6, you know, now he's just, you know, walking around this, you know, queen c6, trying to trade, queen c7, rook d1. And here, you know, trying a checkmate. Queen f3, queen d5, this, knight d4, threatening this rook, knight f5, and after queen f2, brilliant, a rook f1, the idea is queen f1, knight g3, this, this, takes the queen, that didn't happen, and after queen c2, queen d4, it turned out that this bishop can be protected, the only move with this, but of course we'll take, take and play something like queen c4. You know, we're a, we have knight and queen versus rook and bishop, of course it's winning, so Nepo resigned right here. So, and let's move to the final game that Kukash played yesterday against Maxim Vashilograph, who had a great first day. C5, knight f3, knight c6, again, another Sicilian, another very weird line, I would say. You know, he gives up some development, he plays like Magnus, but, I mean, Magnus plays whatever he wants and wins. And this is what happens with Gukesh right now. Bishop g7, he actually gave up a lot of temples in the opening, even though it doesn't seem like, you know, that was a big of a deal. Knight c7, knight g6, h6, knight c7. You see what he's doing? Look, knight is going to g7, then to g6, then h6, back to e7. I mean, he's just moving his pieces around. Rook b1, a6, bishop b3, knight c4, queen a2. And again, he got a worse position with black pieces in the opening. b5, knight b3, queen d8. Look, he's very passive. But you gotta be very resilient. You gotta, you know, be... You know, chess is a very complicated game. You, you know, you can play good for... 40 moves straight and then you know make one mistake and lose the game chess is brutal it's not like football you know you you could score the first minute and then you know you have the whole other 90 minutes you know you can actually fix your mistake in chess you make one mistake and you no know, it's over you can't really compensate it b4 bishop c5 takes queen h4 g3 queen h3 a4 knight is seven again blunder takes takes and now maxim even take the pawn but still you know here again it looks like a completely winning position for white pass pawn on c file bishop is looking very good on this diagonal but what happened next is just insane thing queen of seven rook f8 you know tripled every have all heavy pieces on f file Rook b6, knight e7, rook e1, rook e8, rook e2, queen h5, queen f5, knight f5, bishop f5, rook f5, queen 6 took another pawn. 
King H7, Rook B1, and now after Rook A3, Black have too many threats. So where it all went wrong is somewhere around this point when this move was played, Queen H5, and now Queen F5 was played, Knight F5 takes. So here, according to the computer, the best move is this. But again, you know, Maxim could have you know, converted it a lot more smoother. Actually, it wasn't precise how to do it. And that's what happened. Rook A3, Rook H1, Queen F3. And here, Maxim resigned because he is getting checkmated. King H2, Queen G3, right? King G1, Queen G3, this, 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 this. And basically this. What else? Are we missing? Yeah, basically I think that's it. This, this, and rook a1, queen a1, rook a1, check. So Maxim played great for 40 moves. And after 40 moves, he collapsed in next three moves. And this like, once again shows how chess can be brutal, even on, on grandmaster level. So don't be disappointed if you lose. You know, you played right and then you lose due to some very stupid mistakes happens to everyone as we see here. So after, what, two days now, Fabi is still leading. He's having a great tournament so far, obviously. So he's second. One of the toughest players to beat on the field, I think. Because other players, you know, generally, you know, they can beat each other. But against Wesley, so, you know, usually the most, you know, very confident, you know, always trusts his games, you know, Anish lost, he's almost lost, Vidit is lost till this point, Van Sharic, ninth, Anish Levon, Jan, Maxim, Gukesh, Alireza, Wesley, and Fabi. We have another day of Rapid, to, I mean, today as you're watching this video, and then we'll have two days of Blitz. Very interesting, I hope you enjoyed, I'll see you in the next recaps. Bye-bye.